Welcome to the 5D Academy of Higher Consciousness. I'm Zarathustra, and today we're going to talk about how to trust existence, how to trust life, uh, which is a really a major point in our lives that is really important that we understand this subject. And uh, since we're living in life, and life carries us and we have this connection with the universal flow and at times we feel like we get bumped out of it and especially when things don't go our way anyway so we're going to get into the depth of this and i'll explain uh clearly how the whole system works to the best of my ability and uh, we go on from there. For the moment, we're going to do a special meditation. What I would like you to do is just simply be relaxed and sit comfortably and uh, just find yourself to, in a comfortable position. And uh, I would like you to, this is a visual, visualization uh, meditation and sink inside yourself and simply bring your attention inwards take a deep breath and I would like you to visualize yourself you're standing on the edge of the ocean this white sand beautiful ocean and you're you're looking at the water and imagine the sand is all white, clean, beautiful, pristine beach. And the water is crystal clear, turquoise, clear water, and there's no waves. Beautiful sunny day. The temperature is perfect. The sun is shining on your face, your body. You're in your bathing suit facing the ocean and your feet are touching the water. You are right on the edge of where sand meets the water. Go ahead and feel it. And bring yourself to this place by the power of your visualization. And you're standing there and your feet are apart. You're sort of standing in a form of a triangle. Your feet are a little bit, let's say about a few a foot or two a foot apart from each other here facing the sun sun is shining you feel the warmth the rays the sun rays penetrating your entire body and warming you up it's very pleasant. The water temperature is very pleasant as it's touching your feet. And you open your arms. You're opening your wings, your arms. Your feet are apart and you're facing the sun. And as you are in this state, this place there is a cool breeze even though the the sun is shining it's a beautiful warm day but it's not too hot and there's a cool breeze coming touching your face and this breeze is going through your body going through your mind going through your head and clearing all your thoughts, 
taking the thoughts away. And now it's like you're completely transparent. The air is traveling through your body. There's no resistance whatsoever. And if someone's standing behind you, they can, they can see through your body. You're having this glowing, luminescent body and the air is traveling through it. And it's being filled up with the sun rays. And your body is transforming into light. You're standing in this position, arms open, facing the sun. And as you're taking a deep breath, the power, the prana, the energy, the shakti of the planet Earth is entering into your body and spiraling up. adding, connecting all your chakras to each other, spiraling all the way to your crown chakra and going up into the sky, connecting to the sun. And you're completely starting to feel empty, full of light, connecting the power and the energy of the earth to the power and the rays of the sun. So the earth and heaven are meeting and you are a conduit in between the two. If you look down at your feet, you cannot see your feet. Your feet has turned into energy and, and light. So they kind of no longer have a physical boundary. Cannot see the boundary of your feet. It's all light. And go ahead and take a deep breath. And you can see the power, the energy is traveling through your body. And this energy, the light is taken over and slowly, slowly, you begin to lose the sense of the boundaries of your body. Your body starts to disintegrate. Your body begins to become light body, etheric body. And you can see that. And in this transition, as it is happening, you're losing the sensations of the boundaries of your physical body. You begin to experience and feel this extreme lightness as if you are a bubble, you are a particle suspended in the air. You are suspended in the air. Floating in the air. It's just like a tiny particle 
in the air, completely weightless. And as this taking place, this transaction is taking place, this transformation and this shift is happening from a dense physical body into the light body and the sensations of having a physical body into being weightless. There's also sensation and the feeling that there is no purpose. You are not trying to go anywhere. You're not trying to do anything. You're not trying to prove anything. You're simply suspended in the space. Yet completely aware, full awareness is here, but it's not identified with anything. It's not identifying with a purpose. It's not identifying with the sense of I am something, I am someone trying to get somewhere, trying to get to something. You simply are purposeless. No purpose. You can completely be a total sense of I am, but I am not anything. I simply am. Very different than the ordinary life that we live. Very different than having an agenda, trying to get to somewhere, trying to do something, trying to prove something, trying to defend ourselves or our rights or entertaining our thoughts. You are simply here, available, completely conscious and aware, but no purpose. Not trying to get to anywhere. And in this, and this integration of the physical body has happened into pure light, pure presence, a complete integration, integration with existence, with the sun, with the ocean. You cannot distinguish the difference between your body and the limitations of your physical body with the water, with the ocean. You don't know if you are the water. You don't know if you're the sun, if you're the sun rays, if you're the beach, if you're the breeze. You have no idea of whether you're any of these. But you are, and you're present, and you're here. Totally in oneness with everything that is. Without any agendas. So you can completely relax into this moment and be yourself naked, unprotected. and present.
There are no waves. The water is com completely calm, cr crystal clear, pristine, clean, turquoise water. Clear, clear sky. Nice, beautiful blue. You can hear the sound of the birds and the seagulls. And a nice breeze traveling through. It's a total integration into the presence of the being. Completely one with everything. No boundaries, no limitation, nowhere to go and nothing to do except simply being here. Simply I am. Simple I am. As you are in this state, and light is traveling through, traveling through you, there is a sense of being both the creator and the creation. There is no distinct distinction between the two. You are the creator and you are the creation. It's the complete emergence of the two. If there is a thought arises in you, you're simply observing a thought. It's like a bird traveling, a lonely bird traveling into the sky, identified as a bird, single bird traveling in the sky. You can see that, and the same thing is a thought is traveling in your mind. If a sensation or emotion rises, you can see that very clearly as if a plane is traveling into the sky. There's a presence of an airplane traveling in the sky. It's temporarily and it's shortly will be out of your sight and you won't even hear it anymore. That is an emotion traveling into the vastness of the being. Same as a thought traveling into the vastness of being. And you are the vastness simply aware of the thought, aware of the emotion, but it has nothing to do with you. You are here and something traveling through you. It comes and it goes. It's temporarily, it has a beginning and it has an end. It has nothing to do with you. You're simply aware of it.
when you are in this place, in this place that is pure isness, it's pure bliss because there is no separation. There is no identification with an object. You are not just the water or the sand or the sun rays or the sky. You are all of it. You are experiencing everything but you're not one thing in particular. So there cannot be any threats or fear or worry because there is nothing outside of you separated from being. Hence, it cannot threaten you because you are that thing. You're all of it. Happily being. You don't know if you're the sun rays. You don't know if you are the rays and the energy coming from the planet Earth. You don't know if you're the beach or the water, the ocean. You don't know if you're the birds, the sky. The only thing you know is you are, you are here. Available. Completely in bliss of the union of your own self. Here and now. Realizing and recognizing your true nature. The presence. That which is always here that which does not change. I am. That which is always here. The absence of the presence of the presence, the absence of the absence of presence. That which is always here. The essence of the being. As awareness, pure presence, I am, 
It's the infinite being that by focusing on an object or subject, it will limit itself and brings itself to that thing which is focusing on. Slowly, slowly, the attention comes back into the boundary of a human being. As the attention gets focused, the particles of the body, of the limitation of a human being, all those particles come back together. You're slowly, slowly integrating and coming back into the boundaries of your body, to the limitations of the body. Everything coming back. Your body, which was dissolved into the existence, its molecules, its atoms are coming back together and gathering and creating a form. Yet you are brand new in this moment. As this form is coming back together, It's recreating a brand new you. Even though that shortly after you open your eyes and you look in the mirror, you will see the same looks as 20 minutes ago, but you are not that person. It's going to look the same because your memories dictate what you're going to look like. And since you have these memories very strongly ingrained, in your mind, you come back and you look the same as before. However, you are no longer the same person. You don't have to bring all of the memories back with you. Now that you got a glimpse of your eternal self, you got a good taste of your infinite self. You in a state of expansion, unidentified with any forms, coming back into the form again, slowly, slowly reintegrating. Coming back into this body, coming back, feeling, touching the planet, the earth under your feet, physical sensations coming back. Your home is coming back, your family is coming back, your friends, the world is coming back as you know it. Everything reintegrating into this reality as your attention getting focused on one focal point, 
that you have a human body and you have a life and everything is coming back. As you call it, my life. That's okay because that is the Leela of life, of consciousness, pure consciousness in expansion and in contraction, getting focused and identifying with form. That's fine. That's a part of the Leela of life. And you come back into this again. Take a deep breath. Welcome back these particles. Welcome back everything that wants to come back again. All right, with the difference that you don't have to identify with them as this is who you are. Because now you know that you can always dissolve into the oneness and taste the essence of who you truly are. That too is always available to you. Without any kind of help from substances or alcohol or food or sugar or anything, you simply know who you really are. So you can always travel in between the state of expansion and oneness and the state of apparent separation. In between fifth dimension and third dimension, you have the ability to shape shift and travel back and forth. You have the awareness of it because you just did it and you have done it before. And it's available to you because you're residing in all dimensions simultaneously. Yet you are here. Slowly, slowly come back. Hmm. Great. So today I'm talking about trusting life, trusting existence. As you are doing what you're doing, you're doing the work and you are on your spiritual path. You're a spiritual warrior and you have been called on this journey. You've been invited. And the force of life, that which gives life and takes life, that force which is responsible, that intelligence, you can call it God, you can put any name you would like into it, spirit, the big kahuna, it has many different names. 
Her Majesty, the Supreme Soul, as I call it a lot of times, there is an in, there is the intelligence that is capable and doing running the show, running the force of life, that which makes these planets to turn around each other. And we have never experienced that planet Earth runs into Mars or one of these planets run into each other. They're all turning around themselves and they're all turning around the sun. And like a clockwork, everything is perfectly moving and doing its thing without any kind of interruption. So something is in charge of this endeavor and this transaction, some intelligent force. And as well as the day turns into the night and the night turns into the day. And in your life, you have witnessed that ever since you've been born. Now I understand if you live in the northern part or southern part of the hemisphere, close to the North Pole or, or South Pole, you can experience going through 60 days or 90 days of no sun or the opposite of having daylight the entire time. I understand that. But the rest of the people on the planet, we're all experiencing day turns to night and night turns to day. And then we have the seasons. So summer turns to autumn and autumn turns into winter and winter turns into spring. And that's what is happening. And there is an intelligence here that is taking care of it, is running the show and managing these cycles. Same thing is happening with you and your body. And as you've seen, ever since you were born, you have your bodily functions that they all happening automatically on their own accord. Like when you eat food, you start chewing your food. As you're chewing your food, there's certain kind of digestive enzymes that are being produced through chewing. And then the food starts going through your esophagus and there's more digestive enzymes being produced. So the food is being digested and it goes into your stomach. And then the major digestion happens in your stomach and then it just is being led into your small intestine. Your pancreas starts to produce digestive enzymes. Your stomach is producing hydrochloric acid. You're not in charge of that. You don't decide when your stomach is gonna produce uh, digestive enzymes or hydrochloric acid. You don't decide on that. Some intelligent intelligence is doing it the body intelligence. As far as different hormones are being produced, uh, your heart is doing its job, it's beating regularly. You know, if it stops beating, you're being announced dead. So you're not thinking about, oh, my heart has, has been beating. Oh, I've already had like 55,000 time that it's been beating and now it's going to be more or should be less or blah, blah, blah. Something is running the show. Your nervous system is doing its thing. Your brain is ordering the body what to do. You're not in control of it. You don't choose that. Now, of course, some of us may have some health issues or something happens to us and now we're paying more attention or trying to be more involved in physical functions but basically you're not in control of it and you don't choose how it's going to do its thing so there's an intelligence who's running the show <clears throat> so the body 
has his own system. So when we start to look at these different things, that something, some intelligence is taking care of the show, is running the show. We can get more into it as far as paying attention and the details of what is going on. For example, let's say you decide that I'm going to go visit my uh, family. I'm going to go to another city. I'm going to visit, uh, I'm going to fly. It's Christmas, it's Thanksgiving, it's Easter, and I'm going to go to to another city and visit my um, northern Norway, southern Sweden. I'm going to Germany. I'm going to go to the, from California. I'm going to go to East Coast somewhere and see someone. So you decide you're going to get in your car and you're going to drive your car to the airport and park your car at the airport. Now, when you get in your car and you want to drive your car, you put the key in, into the, uh, 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 turn on the engine, and what happens is a car is made out of 10,000, approximately 10,000 pieces. And when you decide to drive your car to go from A to B, all 10,000 pieces have to cooperate with each other for the car to start and to be functionable. So 10,000 pieces in a car, they all have to hold their structural integrity in that moment. Every time you're going to drive it, they all have to say, yes, I am going to work today. Because if the engine doesn't start, if the fuel pump doesn't work, if the alternator doesn't work, if the brakes don't work, if one of the cables break down, whatever, a single thing that is essential to the function of the car decides I'm not going to work today, then your car doesn't work or breaks down. So all these 10,000 pieces have to be in alignment with each other and they have to give you a thumbs up. So you get in your car, you start the car, you start driving it and everything is fine. So you're driving your car. Now, as you're driving the car, you come to stoplights. And the stoplights, they have to work correctly. So you have the green, green light that you can go to this interaction intersection. So that means the, uh, it's crossing and the crossing light has to be red. It can't be green. If it, that one turns to be green too, now you're going to have an accident with the other cars. So those instruments, those devices, they have to be working 100% correctly for, for you to be able to cross in uh, intersections. Now you do that, and we don't pay much attention to it. We just get in our car and start driving, and our attention is on, is on our own driving. Now you're passing hundreds of other cars, all these other cars, they have to be working perfectly fine too and not doing any malfunctions because if something happened and you're crossing somebody and if let's say for a moment their brake doesn't work or they make a mistake and they make a quick turn or they can't stop, they're going to run into you and you have, you're going to have a collusion. So they have to be working perfectly too. Now, when you're driving your car, you have to be in good health. Your vision is working. You're capable of making your decisions correctly. You have to be able to distinguish your distance with the car that you're following. So if you make a mistake and you're not deciding, your decision is not correct, you can bump into it and have a collusion, and vice versa. So could it happen that at one moment your vision is not functioning right? Could it happen that you fall asleep? 
or you get distracted. How many of us do get distracted with our cell phones? You pick up the phone to make a phone call, which you're not supposed to do that, or you're trying to send a text message as you're driving. Or your kids in the back start to get in a fight, or the do your dog is, starts barking and your attention goes away. And the moment your attention goes away, boom, you run into another car and you have an accident. Sometimes this accident could be fatal, could result into death or dismemberment of yourself or the other passenger, the other driver. Sometimes it's just a minor accident. So what happens is if you're having an accident, now you can't get to the airport, now you can't go to this other city to visit your family. Does this happen? Do people get into the car accidents? They do. So everything as you're driving, you're passing other cars, their car has to work perfectly fine. So the, the parts in the other car has to say yes. Your car has to be a yes. Your body, your functioning, your judgment has to be 100% correct. And as well as them, the street lights must be working fine. What else we got? We got the weather. The weather has to cooperate in that moment. What if you're driving and you want to go to the airport and all of a sudden you come across a, a blizzard and it starts to pour Hail is pouring down, big snow is coming, and there's problems on the road. Your car is slipping, or the road is closed. Something happened. Now a, a tree falls down and blocks the road, and now you can't get to the airport, or you can't get to your destination. How much are you in control of these elements that are not, that you can't, you have nothing to do with? Who is running the show? Isn't there an intelligence that putting things together and synchronizing things correctly that they don't run into each other? There must be some kind of intelligence that's in control because a lot of people come and say, I make my own choice. This is my own free will. I decided that I'm gonna get into my car and I'm going to go to the airport and fly and go see my family. It's my choice. I'm deciding on that. I'm manifesting this trip. Well, how much can you manifest and be in control of the weather. Do you choose what the weather is going to be like? Do you decide whether all the lights, street lights are gonna be working perfectly? Do you decide that other drivers are gonna be in perfect health condition and they're gonna be driving correctly and you won't have an accident with them? Do you decide that their cars, their, their vehicles is gonna be working perfectly? Those are not in your control. You can't choose that. So if we step back and take a look at this and from a broader perspective with open mind, you can see that you don't have much of a say into the elements, the powers that they're not in your hands, they're not in your control. You don't control them. You don't choose them how to be. There is a greater intelligence, something much bigger than you and I that chooses, chooses this. It says, yes, I'm going to allow you today to drive your car to the airport to the security system, uh, security and be able to get an airplane and fly and go somewhere else. 
What about the airplane? Can they break down? Is there delayed? Can you have problems at the airport security? What if you forgot your ID or you didn't bring your passport with you? Or something happens to the plane. Do the planes get can go through cancellations? Do they break down? All of these things. And how much of these things are in your control? And you choose that they work today or they don't work today. When we really sit back and we look at the whole picture and we are looking at it with an open mind, we can see that something much greater than you and I is at work here. Something puts these things together that is beyond my imagination and it's beyond my control. And that thing has been doing this ever since the ever since. It knows what it's doing. It has the power to make the planet Earth turn around itself. It's got the power to make the planet Earth turn around the planet's sun. It's got the power to make my body function perfectly. It's got the power to bring us together and we find each other in a very mysterious way. You may call it Facebook, you may call it internet or Instagram, but somehow it sings in your heart that we feel this resonance with each other. Why are we here talking to each other? Why are we interested in this subject? What has inspired you to be here right now. There is many, many different spiritual teachers out there. If you go on the, on the surf the net, there is no shortage of spiritual teachers. There is no shortage of spiritual books. There is no shortage of webinars, spiritual talks. There's thousands of them right now happening all over the world. They're all available. You can go any direction that you wish. But why are we here together? Why are we attracted to this? Why are we attracted to each other? What brings us together and is not taking us into a different direction? There must be something beyond our understanding something that whispers in your heart, something that binds us together. That is not my choice. That is not something I control and I choose on. That's something beyond my understanding and my control and your understanding and your control. Something is at work here and this is the universal intelligence that knows what it's doing. Now, understanding this, then it brings me to this point that as I touch this, as I begin to feel it, as I come across this and my understanding gets deeper, I begin to see the power I begin to sense the intelligence and the being, something's bigger than me is here. I begin to trust that, trusting that which has brought me into life, that which is feeding me, is giving me the means to make a living at which has brought me to you and I have formed and been a part of this family, this brotherhood, sisterhood, which has been formed with many of you throughout the years. Something has, is, has brought us together. Something whispers in my heart of my attraction, my connection, 
and the resonance that we have with each other. That is not something I've created or I decided consciously that I'm going to make this happen or I'm going to bring you here to sit with me. Something else has done that. We have to trust that. We need to see and recognize the power, the presence, the intelligence of Her Majesty, the Supreme Soul. You can call it God. I'm old-fashioned, but I can see. I see God. I can see it in everything and everywhere. It's this intelligence, this living spirit is everywhere and is the very essence and the very glue of binding everything together it's running life it's running the show it's the very power that is feeding you you go to work and you make money you work hard you save your money you take care of your family but it is this power that is really feeding you. It is this power that is holding you together, is holding your family together. It is this power that leads you to meet your love, person, people you love, whether romantically you are interested in them, or the time that you met your husband, you met your love of life, or your boyfriend, girlfriend, something bring something, that intelligence is bringing you together and putting you together. Or that same intelligence is breaking you apart because it's time for this to end. So the same thing brings it together is the same thing breaks it apart. The same thing that takes you to a period that you're broke, you're not making money, things are not going your, well, your way, the same force makes things happen for you. Things are going your way. You're making money. Things coming to your life. It's the same intelligence that does that. And that intelligence does it for everybody, not just me or you or a couple other people. It's doing it for every single human being, animal, vegetation on this planet. That intelligence is in everything and everywhere. God is everywhere in everything. So you can trust that. You can relax and trust the force, the intelligence that you are taken care of. You will be taken care of. That life as you know it will continue and you don't need to worry about it. You don't have to try to change anything. If it wants to change, it will use you to change. You can relax in that. You can just sit back and say, oh, all right. Okay, I'm not in control. Oh, now I can relax. Yes, you can relax. Because Mama, Her Majesty, Papa, the Force, is taking care of all of us all the time. And in this recognition, in realizing it, what happens, you may say, okay, well, if I don't do anything or whatever, what's going to happen to my life? We're not talking about that you're not going to be doing anything in your life and you're just going to sit down and do nothing all day long. We're not talking about that. Maybe that's what wants to happen. That's fine. It will happen naturally. But 
you still be in action. You still do what you have to do. You still get up in the morning and brush your teeth and shower and clean yourself and make food and take care of your children because that's your program, because that's a part of your, your destiny to be responsible, to take care of things, to work on yourself. It's a part of your life. So you're going to be doing that. But you do it from a different place. You do it from this place of trusting, not from panic, from, not from anxiety, not from fear that what's going to happen to me, what's going to happen to me. Nothing's going to happen to you. You're taken care of. You're loved. Her majesty takes care of you. You are not your own responsibility. You're God's responsibility. She takes care of you because she has been taking care of you your entire life. She's been taking care of your parents and she's taking care of your kids and she's taking care of your friends. It's the intelligence is taking care of all of us. We can relax into that, into the recognition of it in trusting and as you relax into it and you trust into it then but you have to that's a part of it you have to at one point let go of this imaginary rope rinse that you're hanging on that you think you're controlling the horse at one point you got to let it go because it does happen to us at times that life kicks our ass really hard because you want to be in control, you want to be in control, and it will kick your butt. And there are times like you're completely powerless and you have to let it go. And in this letting go, in this taking a deep breath, okay, I'm going to take a deep breath and relax, all of a sudden you experience the space, space opens up. Things open up all of a sudden. Because when you see your consciousness, your awareness, you're the infinite awareness. And I'm just not saying these as words. I want you to take it in. You are the infinite awareness. Just one moment because I my Instagram ran out and I want to post it. Oh, okay, sorry about that. You are the infinite awareness. As we did our meditation earlier and as the infinite awareness, when it gets really focused on a unit, it gets focused on one person, I am a human being, limited and separate, separated from everything. Well, that creates a lot of fear and anxiety because you're this little thing against this whole thing. And obviously it creates a lot of fear because you're very little. Well, what happens is it gets focused on one little tiny thing, which is you. But when you recognize that and you relax and you sit back and you kind of let go, then expansion takes place. Space is created. And then you come back again to this place of complete connection. You are connected completely. You start to feel it experience it and see it again just one moment i'm sorry i apologize i want to get my instagram going again sorry about this you guys okay and expand uh rosalie just one minute honey i'm in the middle of my talk okay so expansion begins to take place in 
letting go because things remember your pure awareness this awareness gets really contracted when it gets single point pointed and focuses on one unit one human being with the sense of separation that i'm separated from everything else i'm here on my own and i need to really protect myself because everything out there is to get me and of course your senses will tell you the same thing because that's your experience from childhood but that's not the truth it's an illusion it's pure illusion it's not real what is real is you're completely connected with everything even that dude which is coming with a knife to kill you or beat you up that is also a part of yourself you're completely connected with that one too because it's an aspect of yourself it's not separated from you so when you come sit back and relax expansion takes place space appears and all of a sudden you start to see things falling into places where you before you were frightened and you have to be in control because you're really worried where the money is coming oh my god have or need because the need the new what's going to happen to my kids or blah 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 or what's going to happen to my future all these things you're worried about as you sit back and you trust life all of a sudden you can see the harmony and the synchronicity of life how everything is synchronized because nothing is an accident you don't run into anyone accidentally we may use it as a way of saying but everything is pure synchronicity everything is exactly designed to be this way and in this design that everything is going to be this way it's also designed that you fail you appear to be to fail you lose you lose money you make a mistake you make a bad investment or you say something stupid you shouldn't have said it or whatever that is also a part of the design of life you're perfectly designed to make a mistake when to this way the past is the way you're supposed to be. you trusted somebody you made an investment you lost money and that was perfectly was meant to be that way doesn't mean you're going to redo it again but now you're seeing it from a broader perspective and you can see okay this was meant to be this way because this is what i was supposed to learn this was my teaching i had because you are in a school of life you didn't accidentally find yourself here you you're here because you are to experience life you are to learn things and experiencing things in this life in this dimension that's a part of the deal that's why you're here otherwise you would stay in the angelic realms and would not come to the physical world you're in the physical world means you are to learn about whatever is happening in your life and look how much you've learned in the course of your life none of it was an accident all of it was designed to be this way including being cheated including when you feel like you've been a victim and you've lost and people lied to you and stole from you including when you stole or you lied to other people or you cheated someone or you cheated your family or you did something wrong all of it was a part of your training program it, 
you can trust in that. And you can trust that that force which has brought you to this point, it will take you home. I promise you that. I promise you that. You can trust existence that God, life, spirit is going to take care of you all the way to the end. It would never fail you. Her Majesty, your Sat Guru, your being, your higher self, any name you want to put into it. We will not let you down. We will carry you all the way home. All the way. You can trust in that. And in that, you can relax. You can just sit back and operate from this place. Okay, I'm going to see. I have a couple of messages here. All right, Maria, thank you. Feel grateful for the deep, peaceful meditation. You're welcome, Maria. I'm glad that you were able to join me today. Uh, can I read your other question loud, or you can tell me if you like? I'm going to unmute you. Uh, hi, Maria. Uh, yeah, you can read it. It's for every, from me to everyone. <laughs> okay. Just kind of making a question statement, uh, because it seems that, um, you know, we're wrestling between right now uh, shifting from uh, living in kind of a, a world where everything is in chaos to a world where we have to sort what we want for our world and for the whole planet as we move out of the old paradigms into the new right and, and uh, new ways of thinking and um, I guess trusting for me is uh, what you were saying was, you know, trust, trust. And so for me, I was kind of asking the question, but also making a comment so that trust is really, really important to trust and surrender to what the process of what is happening. Yes. Her Majesty, the Supreme Soul, our, our beloved Lord God, is taking care of everything. So we don't need to worry about anything. This conflict or this duality or this chaos that you're observing and experiencing in this life, it's nothing new. This has been around ever since the ever since. This era that we're going through, it is an era that there is more light and awareness is being spread all over the world, which is very exciting. And it's very fun to watch it. But the evolution of human consciousness or to sort out this chaos, we don't need to worry about it. That, where, who was running this show 100 years ago before you were born? Who was making these planets turn around each other and each and one another? Who was bringing human beings on the planet and taking them? That same force will be doing it after you and I, 50 years, 20 years, 30 years from now on, when you and I are not around, that same force is going to take care of the show. So we can relax and watch the show and trust that our beloved Lord God will take care of everything. Sounds simple. <laughs> it is a very, it's a lot more simple than we believe and we think because we have this notion 
of separation. We feel that we're separated from life and life is hostile. And therefore we have to do something about it. That's a feeling that we have, but it's all is in good hands. It's all taken care of. And as you come more into this awareness, you come more into this consciousness. A deeper sense of comfort takes place as you relax into it that, oh, okay, you mean I don't really need to worry about this, the destruction of the forest or I don't really need to worry about the slaughter of the animals or I don't really need to worry about what Donald Trump does to the world. I, you mean I can relax. I can relax and, and just be with God and stay in my meditation and be in a Zen state. Oh, I can do that. I don't have to worry about it. Yeah, you can do that and not have to worry about it. But the more you just come back into this place, okay? Are you with me? The more you pull back, and, and don't take me wrong, I'm not talking about being ignorant, all right? I'm talking about the whole span contract we're more aware of the things that screw the world. We're not ties to things and and so that's come to hypnotize you. You have to uh, you know poison food you can to it. So now you're not eating that food or you're not using that technology because you know it's bad for you. But on the opposite side, what happens is this creates more fear. You have become more conscious, but in the meantime, it, has, it drags you into this dark abyss of being worried and panic and freaked out about what's happening in the world. So what I say is does not put you above the unconscious world it's completely hypnotized. Now you have this awareness. Great. Now it brings your awareness into the trust, the love of it, that she is in control. Not you. Not me. Not Donald Trump. Not the evil corporations. Not the great Buddhists or freedom fighters god is in control so now you can trust on god's plan because that's the one who created the show and that's the one who's running it so she is the almighty power not donald trump or the evil corporation she is the one who gives them life so i want to trust the boss not the agents not the peons. These are like characters running around thinking they have some control. But I'm with the boss. I'm working for the boss. My attention is on, on the boss. So in that, I can relax. And as I do more relax into that trust, what happens is your consciousness starts to elevate because expansion takes place. And I understand it's counterintuitive, but that's the trick. You got to relax into that and start to see it. That she is all the characters simultaneously. That she's hiding herself behind Donald Trump. She makes herself look like a person called Donald Trump, but it's her. She's the one who's playing the game. And she played the game as Adolf Hitler. 
and she plays the game as Saddam Hussein, and now she's playing the game as Dalai Lama. She plays the game as Mother Teresa. It's the same one who plays the game. It's her different faces. So as you start to recognize her behind the masks and you relax into that, your consciousness starts to expand because you're starting to see the big picture and you relax in what is. And as that happens, an automatic phenomena takes place. The expansion, it brings you to a higher level of consciousness. And as you're coming higher level of consciousness, elevate more. As you go into the next floor, your always goes into the next floor. Your consciousness are used to God and God every okay try being not gonna show and work I'm asking you right I believe real I'm gonna do heaven and then you're gonna still see this down here this thing is still happening people killing each other they're betraying each other they're destroying the planet but now you have you're arising above it now I'm going to show you what heaven looks like. So in this life, you begin to live in perfect harmony. You don't run into gangsters. You don't run into rapists. You run into beautiful conscious people. You start to see the harmony of life. Things you need appear to you and they come to you. You find your spiritual family and you find inner peace, which is the most important thing. Does it make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's an inside job. It's by taking your focus away from what's screwed up in the world and bringing your focus within yourself where God is and fall in love again with the presence and as your focus turns from the dark into the light then your life starts to change completely it's and it's an inside job sweetheart mm -hmm. agreed <laughs> <laughs> It starts with, with me and it ends with me. I can assure you, my dear sister, that nothing bad is going to happen. This is the Leela of life and Her Majesty, the Supreme Soul, the intelligence that's always been here, knows what she's doing that which has created this universe, she knows what she's doing. So we can trust in that. Let her do her thing. And she's going to carry us home. As she's done it, the entire history of humanity, she knows what's up. We don't need to worry about anything. We just play our own parts. We do what we're here to do. All we do is a simple transaction. We bring our attention inwards towards the source of our thoughts. 
our concerns, our worries, they come in a form of thoughts and sensations and emotions. As your attention goes inwards and you keep your attention on one point, where, where is this place before I think? Where is the source of my thoughts? As your attention goes in that direction, you begin to see everything becomes quiet and it's mm -hmm. silent. Everything calms down. All this chaos which is happening is really inside yourself. What you see in the world, the chaos you're experiencing in the world is a reflection of what is happening inside yourself. You come back to inner silence and you won't even notice the noise in the world anymore. It becomes non-existing. We work on ourselves. We find peace within ourselves. We bring our attention on God, on love that is inside ourselves and is surrounding us. This is our job. And in that, you become a powerful transmission of light. But you can't transmit love and light anywhere in the world and expect it anywhere in the world if you have not discovered it inside of yourself. You have to come to that place and demonstrate it on daily, day to day. But you got to discover it inside yourself because that's where it is. And then you come and tell me if there is any chaos in the world. And if there is anything needs to be fixed in the world. So we do that first. That's our obligation. And that's how we're going to change the world. I'd like to thank you all for joining me today. I look forward to seeing you next week. I uh, am presenting at Conscious Life Expo at LAX Hilton um, on February 7th, 8th, and 9th. I have four events uh, at the Expo and uh, two mini workshops. Uh, followed by February 19th, I'm offering a shamanic healing circle. Uh, I haven't done one in LA for a couple of years and I'm accompanied with Evan Perman. Those of you who remember 10 years ago, we started it, the fifth dimensional quantum healing events here in LA. So this would be my 10th year anniversary of fifth dimensional quantum healing here in Los Angeles. It all started it from LA. Uh, it's a three hour event. Uh, it will be in LAX Hilton. You're welcome to go on my website. I have some tickets available. Uh, we still have the early bird ticket. Uh, also, I have my signature workshop, Return to Love, which I'm going to offer it on February 29th, March 1st, here in Los Angeles. It's for the first time that I'm offering uh, the Return to Love workshop in Southern California. So I look forward to seeing you. Sending you a lot of love and light. Keep in touch. My website is zaratustra.tv. Feel free to connect with me via Instagram, Facebook, or email. Namaste and many blessings to all of you.